Well, in good times, the property value is going up when they buy it. They usually buy it for more, so it creates a supplemental bill, and they get that bill six months to maybe a year and a half after they bought the property. Well, in this case, with the market going down, they get a negative supplemental. So they get a refund is essentially what they get. But they have to set up, the, when the bank sets up the income account, they're actually paying more than they would be paying if they were just paying on their purchase price. So that's something for you to educate them on, that, that they will be getting a refund by the tax, from the tax collector um, at some point, probably in the spring, uh, or maybe late spring. But also they will apply the tax collector Collector will apply the excess to their second installment. So that's something for them to contact after the first of the year, contact the tax collector and see how they're going to deal with their situation. Whether they're going to send them a refund or whether they're going to uh, apply it. And they told me to have them contact them in March, uh, about a month and a half before the bill is, is due. And they'll let them know whether or not they'll apply it, the excess or whether they'll send them a refund. Who is they? Tax collector. Because okay. I have nothing to do with the bills or the collection. That's all done through the tax collector's office. One of the other sheets of paper I passed out <clears throat> is 10 things that every property owner should know about their property taxes. This really hits all the key areas that people should know. It talks about, you know, the homeownership, the uh, exemption on homeownership. It talks about a you know, spouse being uh, reassessed. It talks about financing and does financing for the reassessment. It talks about Prop 58 and Prop 60, parent to child transfers, and if you're age 55 or older. All of those, I think, are very important for people to know. It talks about uh, you know, calamity. Uh, it doesn't talk about Prop 8 because at the time I put that together, Prop 8s weren't, weren't an issue. I didn't, wasn't thinking about it. But it covers all the other major points uh, that people should know. So instead of going over them, you, know, you can read them. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer questions about them. Um, I have a question on the transfer. Yeah. Um, if someone's 55 or they're buying a house of equal or less of value, mm -hmm. um, what if they get remarried? Can that new spouse go on and they still transfer the tax basis? Let's see. So they currently own a home. Mm -hmm. uh, they purchased it 35 years ago. They want to sell it and buy another home. But they've got remarried since then. Okay. And so they want to buy the new so, house with the new spouse. Okay. The old, the old house, who, when they went through a divorce, what happened to the property? Well, they still own the, the one, one person owns the property. Okay, and so the spouse she wants, she wants between to spouses see. now, between spouses, you can bring them on and take them off, whatever. It doesn't matter. They never still get maintain that lower tax rate. They still maintain their Prop 13, okay? Yeah. Yes? What's the chance of Sacramento County ever um, cooperating with other counties when somebody 55 or older wants to, you know, say come from the Bay Area? You know, like Slasher County cooperates. That's why you got all those Dell webs up there. Well, they don't cooperate. Sacramento, they're I mean, there is a that that law. Um, when it was passed, the legislature said a county could either well, they have to allow it within their own county, mm -hmm. but they could allow other counties people to train change from other counties and come in. Um, there's only a half a dozen counties of the 58 that allow people to come in from another county. And those are primarily the Bay Area and Southern California counties. So you can't do that in Sacramento, you can't do it in Flasher, you can't do it in Elroy, you actually can't do it in any of the Valley counties. None of them. You used to be able to do it in Modoc, and I used to tell people from Sacramento, if you want to step up and, and get a better house, you can go to Modoc, but if you want to live there, that's you know that's the priority. But the problem is you real realistically to go to San Francisco, let's say, or go to LA, which allows you to do that, you really can't physically sell your house here and get a better house. Or, you know, when, you, when you're when you equal or less in market value, you're going to end up with something you probably don't want to live in, or a neighborhood you don't want to live in. So, so it really is not effective um, statewide at all. 
Lesser County can't reciprocate. No, no. The law didn't allow counties to pick and choose. And so is it you accept all counties or just the majority? And so the majority, 52 and it now, allow you to do it only within the law. Yes? Uh, this may be a tax collector uh, question, but uh, somebody, if they don't pay their taxes, what's the time period? Is it still five years and then? The they can, I mean, they file a lien against it. Is it is a tax filter, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to say it is five, seven years, I want to say, but it could be five years. Okay. Uh, but if we're going to tax deed sale, if it, if it goes to sale, right. if that happens, they don't pay their taxes for whatever period of time, it goes to sale and... and right. I mean, are you seeing any of that where people just are not going to be, if they don't have an impound account, just not going to pay their taxes until... I mean, I see it every year because we see the list that comes through, but I'll tell you, it hasn't, it hasn't changed that much. Okay. The number of those hasn't changed that much. Actually, I was kind of surprised. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I have an annual report, and I have some of the graphs I'm going to show you in a minute come from this annual report. It's something this is the fourth year we've done it. This report is on my website. So if you want to get a copy of this, or actually the 10 things, or well, the brochure isn't on there. That's the only thing that I'm passing out that isn't on the website. Um, but that report is in there. It has some great information uh, about my office and about communities uh, within the county of Sacramento. Well, I forgot. Yeah, I did pass it out. This is something, a new program that we are implementing this year. We actually started it last year, but we didn't advertise it because we wanted to work all the budget out of it. But for you who have independent businesses, you have to file a business property statement. And if we are sending you a business property statement, which we do at the end of January each year, um, instead of filling out the paperwork and mailing it in, this will allow you to do it online. So you can go into our website and you can get the forms filled out electronically, save a copy for yourself for the next year, and then send it in to us. This will save, the first year won't save much money for you, but after that, all you have to do is then make changes. You save that copy, just make changes to it, and send it in. And it saves us a, a, the whole the processing of taking the paper information you gave us to put it into our computers. Now we can just directly download it into the computer. So it's a really efficiency measure for us. And over time, it's an efficiency measure for private businesses. Ken, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Citrus Heights is in the process of allowing small businesses to operate out of homes mm -hmm. so that they won't have to pay rent on a storefront. How does that affect their tax uh, assessment, their property assessment, if they're using that property for business and uh, living use, does it affect that at all? Not really. Not really. Yeah, we, don't, we don't look at a residence that's being used as a business, a portion of it as a business, unless it's, unless it's classified and sold as commercial property. I mean, like downtown where you have properties where you have residences above and business below, yes, we let that as a commercial property. But someone who has a house and converted a bedroom into an office, you know, we, don't, we don't treat those any differently as a, re as a residence. Because typically if they want to sell that property, they probably sell it as a residence. Yeah, I don't think that they change the designation. Right, they don't. To, they don't they're they're just allowed to anything. use it for those purposes. That's right. Certain businesses. That's right. I don't think tattoo parlors are important. <laughs> <laughs>